Welcome to the Employee Advocacy and Influence Podcast. My name is Bradley Keenan. I'm the founder and CEO of Disseminate, the employee advocacy platform. And with me, I have Lewis Gray, who is our senior marketing manager, which I've written down because we've re-recorded the podcast about three times now because I kept giving him random promotions. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take a promotion live on the podcast. Senior marketing manager. It's official. Yes. That is your current job title, that so that's fine. That is my current job title, yeah. But if you, if you want to go ahead of marketing, we can, we can fire it up there. Um, but cool. Uh, what we're going to go through in today's episode, we're going to talk about the pitfalls of manually running uh, an employee advocacy program. Um, and then we'll get into the differences between running a manual employee advocacy program and having a dedicated platform to manage it from. So let's get into it. So just a bit of an explainer of uh, how we came to decide to do an episode on this. So we are big advocates of just listening to your customers, listening to your clients, listening to what they have to say. Um, and f full transparency, we use a tool called Gong. Many of you might be familiar with Gong, um, but essentially it's just a, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, I just call it a, a sales assistant. Tool. Customer, it's a conversation intelligence platform is the name. Oh, well, that's so much better than what I said. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, we, uh, so the, the sales teams can record calls, our customer success team can, we can, we can listen and, and take some inspiration from, from what they've said for, uh, for our content ideas. Um, and something that comes up quite often, especially on the sales calls is this idea of, uh, well, maybe not the idea of, but people will be running an employee advocacy program manually, and they want to know why they should use a dedicated platform. Okay, so when you say manual, what do you like in your mind? What does that mean? Um, so the example that I'm referring to, uh, it was somebody who was every time they produced a piece of content they wanted their employees to share, they would manually email a select group of employees who they thought would share it to social media. So it doesn't have to be email, it can be you could literally ask somebody, you could be in the same office as somebody, send them a message on Slack, and be like, oh, can you just share this link? Um, it, it's any way that's kind of w without structure, without having a dedicated platform in place, without having a real strategy, just this is our latest piece of content. I'm going to send it to uh, Helen, who works in sales, and ask her to share it because she's got loads of followers. Got it. So okay, versus having a, a structured advocacy program platform exactly yeah. that yeah i mean okay. you can get into organic as well which is where it's just happening without having to ask people but yeah that's what we mean by by manual employee advocacy yeah absolutely so i think for i think for me there's obviously we're biased on this so we have to be you know very careful not to just you know sing the uh, employee advocacy theme tune but ultimately for me what it comes down to is there's two sides to it there's the process in doing it so if you've got Let's say you've got 20 people in your company and your company culture is fantastic and people communicate really well, everyone's bought into the mission. Then having an email system where you email people and say, here's content I would like you to share. Please add your own point of view to it. Here's the social network I want you to share it to. Um, you could do that and actually see quite good results. You're but asking a lot. Sorry? It's asking a lot, I think, as well. It, it is asking a lot because you're actually that what's the chances they're even going to open the internal email and not be too busy to to do it but you could actually get good results from it but even if you did it you then don't have the other piece to it which is the data and the analytics to actually give you the positive reaff the positive affirmation to keep doing it doing it again yeah i think that's fair it's i would call it without sounding patronizing i'd say it's a start if you're if you're doing things manually you've obviously recognized the the potential of employee advocacy. So, you know, the fact that you've, if you've identified a group of employees in this instance, it was like 20 to 30 employees who are on an email list um, who are being sent content regularly. It is a start and it's not, I don't want to essentially just come in and, you know, bash that whole idea um, because it's great to take those first steps, but I think it's then important to recognize that the only way to scale it, and like you've already acknowledged, Brad, is, uh, or sorry, like you've already acknowledged to, to track it and measure the performance as well, you're going to need a dedicated tool. I think there's kind of an inflection point where it becomes 
just not possible to do it manually and my gut would say that my gut would say that you'd struggle to do it above 50 people manually and 50 would be a lot because you you might not be connected to all of those people yourself so unless you manually go in and check their account to see whether they posted it you've got you've got no way of being alerted to whether they they actually did so i think that that's part of it but also you have to think about the effort like you just said the effort that you're putting someone asking of them to go through and to manually create the content they might get it wrong they might make a mistake so that task basically just means it's less likely that someone will participate in it because the the administration is just a little bit too high yeah for sure and in instances like that where somebody said the wrong thing potentially obviously worst case scenario you won't know about it straight away like you said unless you're actually policing it and these 30 to 50 people who you've sent this piece of content to you having a, a, a unique list and you've got their linkedin url for example and you go through and review all of these uh, posts that have gone out, I don't think realistically that's what people are going to be doing. So if somebody makes a mistake, you might not know about it for a couple of days until it makes it to your feed, if ever. So worst mm. case scenario, that just goes completely under the radar. Um, but yeah, like you said, most importantly, you don't actually know that they have shared it. You can cross your fingers and hope, but you don't know if sure that's been done. I think it's a really good test before before if you're in the process of considering launching an employee advocacy program, there are there is an argument to say to do it manually with a few people to start with to learn. I don't think just throwing technology at problems is is the right thing to do. Like I, I guess that kind of is against what we we should probably say. But actually, when we bring a customer on, we don't want someone to be a customer for a year. We want to be a customer for you know three, four, five years. In fact, the worst thing is for somebody to join for a year. So understanding what the appetite is for somebody sharing and what that does when they share with two or three people in the company you know even three to ten shows you well there is an appetite for somebody to participate and when they share it has this impact and then you can use that as a case study to say actually what if we would do this for a hundred employees or a thousand employees mm. yeah you're right with with regards to throwing technology at problems as well uh, there's, there's probably an important point to make here about having the right company culture too. So you'll quickly realize that if, you know, if you decide to go the manual route to begin with, to see, uh, you know, to see if there is appetite for, for employees to share and see whether they will, uh, take it on board. Um, I think that's, you should have a good sense of your company culture anyway, but I think you'll quickly realize if there's problems there with employee engagement as well, if people are just, if they just disregard it completely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that we find interesting is we have a qualification model that we go through when we bring on new customers. And typically a qualification model, if you were prospecting somebody would be, you know, company size, things like that. For us, a lot of it's things like what's their glass door review? What's the current engagement on their content at the moment? Because if somebody has a one star on glass door, thousands of terrible reviews about what a bad company they are to work for all their content is pretty crap just talks about themselves and you know it's really kind of self-serving content those two things would highlight that amplifying that actually won't work because all you're going to be amplifying is bad content with people who don't want to share it so what you want to see is okay as companies scale it's very difficult to have you know four and a half five stars on glass door because there's always going to be people that are disgruntled or whatever but if your glass door review is below a two and a half i would say that there's work to be done there before you think about running an employee advocacy program yeah definitely something to pay attention to for sure um, i think it's something people just maybe don't disregard but it's something that people just don't consider they get this idea in their head they're going to launch an employee advocacy program um they they find a tool but they haven't taken a step back to like okay will people actually want to take part in this but just out of curiosity brad I don't mean to put you on the spot here but would you what do you think would be ideal for somebody if they had like 20 to 30 people they thought might want to who might be up for becoming employee advocates advocates and sharing content would you encourage them to go the manual route first or would you say look at a tool uh just go through like a, an initial almost like soft launch and see how it goes like, what do you think would be the the best way to go about it? It would depend. Like many answers, it would be, it would depend. So, one of the issues is if you choose twenty people and you cherry pick them, 
So let's say, for instance, I'm a, a, a marketing manager of a you know company that's got 3,000 employees and I want to launch an employee advocacy program. And I want to do it because I believe in employee advocacy. There's the temptation that I might go and cherry pick 20 people who I know have great audiences and I know have an appetite for it. So I've cherry picked them. So straight away, the test isn't really as valid as it would be if, had it been more random. And then I ask them to share something and it gets great engagement. And then when I go to the CFO and say, hey, I've done this test and everything worked out really well, they would say, how did you come up with that group of people? And I say, well, I'd, I'd, I'd selected them based on, you know, that they're already active on social. So that would kind of, it would, it would spoil the, the, the test, really. So you'd have to be careful about who you chose. But let's say I chose 20 salespeople who had never shared any content before. I would want to do it in a controlled way. So either, let's say there was a sales kickoff and it was actually a physical event or there was going to be a Zoom call where everyone's going to be on. I would try and do it actually on the call there and then rather than do it as an email that I sent out to say, hey, here's the image. Because when you do that, people, there's friction, like I said before, and people just go, this is just too much work. So that would then also become a self-fulfilling prophecy because I would feel like there wasn't the appetite to do it. So yeah. I, yes, I would test it first, uh, but I would definitely do it in a, in a controlled way. Yeah. Yeah, I think with, um, if you were to go the, the, the platform route, to, to kind of do a an initial trial. I think it would almost be worth inviting people who were less engaged initially. I think this is maybe a bit of a, not controversial point, but this is slightly against the grain, just because you know that if it works with a platform, when you're, if, if you've invited a bunch of people who generally don't share to social media, then when you do roll it out to the people that you might have cherry picked as being the ideal candidates, then you know, you know you're going to have a, a better chance of seeing better adoption rates, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. We, we have this concept that we've kind of started using more recently. I might have mentioned it on the podcast a week or so ago. Um, uh, this idea of having like an ideal advocate profile, which is the person in the company that A, benefits the most from sharing on, on social. So they, they have an invested interest, but also that they align with the, the strategy. So creating that profile first and then going after those people but actually now what we're thinking about is who who is the gatekeeper to that group of individuals and who influences them so let's say for instance like a notorious one is engineers right so we work with a lot of tech companies and especially when it's employer branding their their dream scenario is that engineers will share thought leadership content on LinkedIn to attract more engineers because there obviously there's a skill shortage and engineers know engineers. One of the mistakes that I think have been made in the past, but now we're seeing good results from people doing this in a different way, is engaging with the head of engineering first and making them the champion for that group of people becoming active on social so what happens is the employer branding person almost cuts that out that head of engineering goes straight to the engineers and says hey can you start sharing on social and they're like well we're busy coding and we don't want to do that and that's kind of becomes the end of the conversation but when the conversation comes from the head of engineering and it's pitched as we want to attract more engineers so we can hire more people to make our sprints quicker and less you know dependency on you to do more work and extra hours and all that kind of stuff that value proposition shifts and actually they start to go oh no i i see why we would want to do this now yes. but sometimes people just skip that stage out which i think is a mistake so you're saying start from the top kind of work your way down well i think it's again i would be a pol politician on this one but i think it's both so i think you can go ground up but also top down is really important. So if your CEO isn't isn't on board and thinks social is a waste of time, then employee advocacy program isn't going to work because people will always do the thing that is valued more by the people that essentially pay their salaries or do their performance reviews. So if social is seen as like this thing people scoff at and actually it's a waste of time, then you know, you're probably not going to get an employee advocacy off the ground, a program off the ground. So getting the senior executives posting first is a great way because it gives permission to everyone else to to join in. Yeah, I was going to use salespeople as the, the example for that because that's spot on. Um, and this isn't bashing salespeople. I've started out in sales and obviously, Brad, you come from a, a sales background too. Um, 
salespeople are probably the, I'd say that's the time when you want to start from the top down because salespeople are some of the busiest people in the company, like notoriously time poor because they're, they're, they're on calls, they're, you know, prospecting, whatever it is. Um, generally speaking, like they are the most time poor, some of the most time poor people in the company. So if you're then asking them to, part to participate, if I can get my words out. <laughs> participate, I think is what you were going to say. I'm going to write it down. Participate is what I was trying to say. Uh, if you're asking them to participate in your program, their answer is always going to be, well, why should I? Like, I don't have the time to do it. Obviously, you can communicate the benefits for them, but they don't have the time. If you went to the head of sales and communicated the benefits to them and they started doing it first, especially if they then start seeing results, then it's going to be so much easier to get the rest of the salespeople on board. So in that instance, I think it's, if you were like a, an SDR, for example, and you were trying to explain to your head of sales why you were posting on social and not spending time on the phones or whatever it might be, I think that would be a very difficult conversation to have. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, and that, that really comes down to the point of having having a platform or a program that's kind of official means that you can be strategic so you can engage your c-suite so the reality is some people are lucky enough to have a ceo that posts by themselves on social some most people aren't so you might have to have a strategy where your employee advocacy program is more one-to-one -one. so one-to-one -one meaning let's say you're let's use a cmo and the ceo and the coo right they're so busy they're just not going to do social so the marketing team may take over their account there's risks involved in doing that if you don't do it in a platform right so if you do it th that is something that's very common is for the ceo to give somebody else in their company access to their linkedin account right huge security risk huge i can't believe people do it because what's stopping that marketing executive leaking the details and then somebody then messaging on behalf of the ceo to a journalist or whatever there's so much could go wrong with that so having a program where they can basically post on their behalf first it essentially locks in senior leadership are engaged in this without senior leadership really needing to do anything so then you can pass it down through through the through the platform and get analytics and get more buy-in because you actually have the data to back it up. But if you just said to salespeople, your CRO says post on social, so you should, they will just say that they did it, even if they didn't. So you kind of have to have the analytics to say whether they did or did not. Yeah, it gives it visibility, doesn't it? Like you're saying, if, if, you, if you have that example where you've got a marketing exec posting on behalf of the CRO, if within your platform you've got things like, uh, even leaderboards for like people who have shared the most that month or generated the most clicks, just having that visibility of them even if they're not featured in a leaderboard, just them being in the platform and you're able to see what they've shared and that kind of thing. Again, it just validates the fact that they're doing it. So having that centralized activity, you know, you could, you could argue you can do the same with LinkedIn. You know, you can jump on LinkedIn, you can see if somebody's posting, but the LinkedIn feed is just so cluttered. Like mm. how often do you, are you going to see your, your colleagues in there? Maybe more, I know obviously every feed will be different, but you're more likely to see as a junior salesperson and SDR is more likely to see their CRO and the the rest of the, the senior sales team sharing if it's all in one centralized place and they can see the impact of that activity too. Okay, so let's summarize what are the key reasons that somebody would use a advocacy platform or a tool rather than do something manually. So I have four and the first for me is just time. So time meaning for the person running the program, it would be it would be insanity to try and put a, a weekly email or a daily email together, even just to format it, to get the correct links. That in itself would be a huge task for a single person. But for the people sharing content, nobody wants to be cut, copying and pasting links and choosing images. It's just too confusing. The second is accountability. So there's an old phrase that people say that people do what managers watch meaning if something's being tracked you're more likely to do it so if we know that sharing on social is a strategic decision made by the company and somebody is accountable to it the probability that it's going to happen is is far greater uh and then i said four it's actually three because i just put two together but the final one is roi and data so at some point even if you're running a manual employee advocacy program, even if that's taking your time, that time is is money. And at some point you're going to need to say to the CFO, 
that you want more money to do more activity that you think is working. Now, as much as CFOs are lovely people, typically they work very much on data and uh, analytics. So if you're able to say, we did this activity, we spent X dollars on it, but we got Y dollars in value, it's a lot easier to ask for more money going forward and to scale a program out even further. If you're doing it manually, that would be a very difficult thing to do. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, analytics for me is somebody running an employee advocacy platform, hands down the most important thing for me, because it just validates to what you're doing is what you should be doing. And obviously you can see the impact that, you know, all of this activity is having. So appreciate that, Brad. Um, we'll wrap it up there then. So Thank you very much, everybody, for, for listening to the podcast this week. We do actually have a blog post on this topic that goes into a little bit more detail. Um, if you prefer a written format, we'll pop that in the show notes below. Um, but as always, you can reach out to myself or Brad if you want to get in contact. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for listening and we'll catch you next week. <laughs>